Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today is number 114 of small engines questions and answers for Friday, December 14th, 2012. It's starting to get a bit cold here in Ontario, Canada, and soon we're gonna have snow to stay, but lately we haven't had that much snow. I am filming this a little bit earlier in the week, so who knows by today, Friday, what we're gonna have. Before I get started today, I just wanna show you guys how you can set your preferences to HD format when you're watching a video. So all you have to do is go to this icon, click it, and you're going to see a selection. The higher the number, the better the quality of the video is going to be. Now I film all my videos in HD, so if you go here and you click 720p HD, you're going to get HD quality on the video. And depending on your internet connection, when you go to an HD format, make sure that the line here loads up, because if this isn't loading up properly, the video will not play. Now it's going to take longer for this to load up if you're watching it in HD as opposed to regular resolution. And also depending on your monitor, if it's HD or not, it will affect the quality of the video. This is my shop computer here. This monitor is not in HD, so I'm not getting a true HD experience even though I put it in HD down here. But my computer in the house, which I edit all my videos on, it is in HD and there's a huge difference. It's still going to be a lot clearer even though your monitor is not in HD. But if you want the true HD experience, just go buy a monitor that is in HD. They're fairly cheap. You can get a good one for under $200. And it makes the videos much clearer. I also want to thank all my viewers for their support. All those who've sent gift donations, cards. And I also really appreciate the nice comments that you guys leave under my videos. And my first question today is... Why doesn't my snowblower want to run properly this fall? It ran good last year when I put it away, but this year it's hesitating and backfiring. I'm just gonna give you the most common problems when it comes to this issue. And what they are is bad gas, or if you left your snowblower outside all summer, that's another problem too, because that can cause water to get in your carburetor or the fuel tank, and then it's not gonna run properly. That's exactly what happened to this snowblower here. Actually, I know the guy who bought this snowblower. He just bought it the other day and it didn't run properly. But the guy that sold it to him said when I put it away last year, it ran perfect. So the problem with this one was that there was water inside the fuel tank and the carburetor. When I took the carburetor bowl off, it was literally full of water. Now what could happen with that is when it got really cold outside, the carburetor bowl could have cracked. What I did to fix this is I drained all the gas, obviously. I also ran a bit of good gas through to make sure to flush out all the rest of the water that was in the bottom of the tank. Then with my shop heated, I left the carburetor bowl off. I left the gas cap off to let everything dry so that there wouldn't be any trace of water left either in the tank or the carburetor. And another reason could be that the fuel just went bad on its own, even though you may have stored it indoors. So if you have that issue as well, just drain the gas like I did on this blower, and that should solve your problem. Now sometimes it could be a more serious issue, but 9 times out of 10, this is what I have to deal with with these common problems. Another question I got the other day is, do the crank bearings on a chainsaw oil themselves with the oil for the bar? or with oil in the gas? Well, the answer to that is the engine crankshaft bearings oil themselves with oil that is mixed into the fuel. The bar oil in the chainsaw is strictly for the bar and chain, and when you put fuel which is mixed with oil, that's the oil that greases or oils all your engine parts. That's why it's important to mix your fuel properly with a good two-stroke engine oil. With this oil here, you can go 50 to 1, which is 50 parts to 1 parts of oil. So that would even out to 5 liters of fuel to one of these. I go 45 to 1, so I go 4.5 liters to one of these. It's my personal preference. Maybe I don't need to do that, but I like to just put a little bit extra oil in my fuel. And my next question, a YouTuber told me that he has a small snowblower with a two-cycle engine like this. This is actually a two-cycle Tecumseh engine. And what he's wondering is, when I mix the oil with the fuel, does it have to say snowblower on the oil can? Well, it does not have to say that it's good for snowblower on the two-cycle engine oil can. 
That's just to make it easier for people that aren't too familiar with two cycle engine oil. And then when they go to the store, if they see it's a snowblower or lawnmower on the oil can, it's a lot easier for them to choose the oil that they need. So in this case, any good two cycle engine oil will work. This oil here would be good. So with these over here, this one here is a semi-synthetic two cycle engine oil. And here's some echo oil as well. Castrol makes a good two cycle oil as well. So any good oil will do the job. You just want to make sure that if it's a two cycle, you're actually using two cycle oil instead of four cycle oil in it. When it's a two cycle, you mix the oil. When it's a four cycle, you just put the oil in the motor. For example, this motor here is a four cycle, so you just put 5W30 right into the engine, and then you check the level with the dipstick over here. And the same principle would apply when you go to get engine oil for your four cycle snowblower engine. It does not have to say snowblower on the oil can. As long as you use the recommended oil, which is usually 5W30, then you're good to go. Another question I get sometimes is in regards to the grease fittings on some snowblower augers. I'm specifically talking about the grease fitting located here on the auger. Some people ask me, why is there a grease fitting if it's not actually turning on the shaft? It's actually secured on the shaft by a shear pin. Well, I'll give you two main reasons why grease fitting is good to have on there. It does prevent a bit of wear because there's still a bit of loose from the auger to the shaft. So it's going to prevent wear and tear that way. But most importantly, I find is it's going to prevent the augers from seizing on the shaft. If you do any mechanical work to snowblowers, I'm sure you've been in the position where you try to take an auger off of a shaft and it's fused on or seized on really tight to the point that you have to heat it up with an acetylene torch to get it off. So I recommend to regularly grease these fittings at least once a year and all the grease is going to work its way between the shaft and the auger shaft. So it's going to be right in between the two parts and it's going to prevent them from seizing up. By the way, I replaced the bolts that were here with proper shear pins. The bolt that was here just previously wasn't the proper one. And same with this side. Another question I often get over and over is in regards to Tecumseh snowblower engines. Now I'm talking about the four cycle engines on most snowblowers that you see around. People are asking me, is it normal when I prime it that fuel drips out of the carburetor? Well, that's perfectly normal and common on these engines. Basically, when there's too much fuel coming into the carburetor, it just drips out. You're not flooding the engine because the fuel has to go up an intake pipe before it gets in the engine. So it's just dripping on the ground. And here's a 10 horsepower Tecumseh engine here. I'm going to prime it up and you're going to see the fuel is going to come out. Basically, all it's doing is pushing air in the carb and pushing the fuel into the venturi of the carb and then it's dripping. It's not a big deal, you just want to make sure you don't have sparks around or that you're not smoking cigarettes around your snowblower when it's doing this. And it does not mean that you have to take your snowblower into the shop. If it's running good, don't worry about it. Just don't prime it as much the next time you go to use it. And another tip is if you have the choke on and then you prime it two shots, it should start up right away. And with the choke on, usually less fuel will drip out, but if you prime it five, six times, it's still gonna drip. You're also gonna be seeing a lot of tool review videos in the future because I've been buying some tools lately. This is my new Milwaukee M18 impact driver. This is a great tool if you're a small engine mechanic. It's good for quarter inch drive sockets. Also, you'll see a tool review on the small snap-on slotted screwdriver. And again, I want to thank all you guys who watched my compressor videos last week. I really appreciate that. So that'll wrap it up for today's Q&A. I hope that we get snow soon, actually, because it does look nicer outside when it's white instead of brown like it is right now. I'm sure for all you guys who have small engine shops that it is better for business as well. And again, thanks for taking the time today to come watch this video. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you in two weeks. Have a nice day.